Justin Haynes was in a toxic relationship with a girl named Jasmine Perkins, and on the evening of July 29th, 2019, they got into a fight. Jasmine's dog allegedly bit Justin on the leg after Justin started yelling and punching holes in the walls, and then Justin retrieved his AK-47 from another room in the house and returned to shoot it recklessly through a locked door at Jasmine and her dog. He hit Jasmine twice with the high-powered rifle, once on the inner thigh causing catastrophic tissue damage, and once in the left hand, leading to permanent loss of that hand. And in case you're wondering why he randomly owns an AK-47, this case takes place in Florida. Mr. Haynes, I'm- He knows. There was a, a bunch of different places he could have gone to there. Like he could be racist, you know what I mean? Because whenever you see like a new uh, video channel, you never know like what kind of attitude they're going to have. And he took the right approach. Like, a, yeah, he has a fucking... He's an AK-47 because he's in fucking Florida. Dude, it's like... You know. I'm going to call somebody for the child in just a moment, okay? I'm just getting pertinent information from you, okay? I don't want to call anybody for the child. It's my son. I didn't... I put him in the room for a reason. This is going to take quite a bit of time of investigating. We're not going to hurry through this, okay? So you need to get over the idea that we're just going to just stop doing what we're doing. We are going to do this step by step, which means I'm going to get your information. I'm going to call someone to, to get the kid. And then we're going to talk to you about what happened. That's the steps in which we're going to do this because that's safest for you, safest for us, and safest for the child. So, Sir. what is your date of birth, Mr. Haynes? Three of eighty-eight. No All right, Mr. Mr. I'm doing Mr. anything. I understand, Mr. Mr. Haynes. This girl, when she locked herself in the room with the dog, and, she, and the dog fucking beat me. If you if you put your flashlight on there, you can see that's a dog bite. He beat me, okay. and I tried to protect my son who was at a con. It, Okay, what is the telephone number I can call you for the child? Everything it is that she said is going to be, she's going to go to a hospital with no problem. I'm going to the hospital with a dog bite, and I didn't do anything but other than protect my son. Before we get to Justin and our speculation about his personality, I think we should completely expose this crime as best as we can so that his manipulative arguments and feigned concern for his son become transparent from the start. His argument is that he shot the dog in self-defense on the basis of Florida State standard ground laws. He says he was concerned about his safety and the safety of his son, and that he was trying to shoot the dog before it bit someone else, like his son. He said in his initial interrogation that he felt he was entitled to shoot the dog because it was denying him access to a room in his house. I'm having a very hard time believing that dog being contained that you felt this dog was a threat to you if you're trying to go back into the room. That's One thing he also forgot is that he's not white. Like, he's already clearly in the wrong here. But like, yeah, it's Florida. But you can't fucking call stand your ground if you're not white, dude. It's, it's you know... What the fuck is that? It's not, it's, that's it's, not a plausible, it, but it's, logical... It's, but it's, my, it's my property, though. I mean, it, well, right, in this right. particular situation, it is my property. I don't feel like I should be barred from any room just because a dog and a girl that I don't like is in the room. I should right. be able to access it if I need to get my cell phone, if I need to go ahead and get a pair of drawers. I feel like I should be able to, I should be obligated to be able to go into my own bedroom mm -hmm. without having to worry about somebody in there that I don't particularly like who owns a dog. The obvious problem is that Justin didn't shoot the dog, he shot his girlfriend. Another problem is that the dog and its owner Jasmine had barricaded themselves in Justin's room out of fear of Justin. And after several failed attempts to pry open the door, he then shot his gun through the door, at which point Jasmine was injured. Justin's son was locked in his own room while all this was going on, so he had two doors separating himself and the dog. It's very hard to make the case that the dog was an imminent threat to anybody, which would be required for a self-defense argument. It's also hard to believe Justin's story about why he fired the rifle, especially as more details are brought to light. 
like the fact that he may have hung up on the 911 operator when Jasmine called for help, and he didn't immediately allow officers into the house when they arrived, showing more concern about facing the consequences of his actions than saving Jasmine's life. I think it's much more likely that he fired the rifle as an impulsive action in a state of rage at not being able to get the door open, and is now working backwards to build the self-defense argument. Now, while you were talking to the 911 operator, what was the defendant doing? Making threats, yelling at me. All right. Was he in the room or, or still outside the room? Um, when I first got on the phone with the 911 operator, he was outside of the room. Towards the end of the conversation, um, he had got in the room. All right. So. If I understand you correctly, while you're on the telephone with the 911 operator, at the beginning of that conversation, the defendant's out of the room, but by, towards the end of that conversation, he does enter the room. Yeah. If I understand you correct? That's correct. He, he once he gained entry to the room, uh, he took my phone and hung up on the 911 operator. Now, what were you doing whenever the defendant entered the room? Uh, sitting on my behind uh, with my back against the bed, uh, my feet against the closet door, and, okay. and I was on the phone with the 911 operator. Okay. Bailiff posted up, ready to give the order. Yeah, what does the bailiff do? Does he ban people? <sighs> like bailiff is like, he, he's available to what? Like, you know, he just moderates the chat. And were you continuing to talk to the 911 operator? Once Justin got into the room, I was, my attention was on him. Okay. All right. So what happened with the, not the, the telephone and the 911 operator? Uh, well, once he gets in the room, um, I believe we have a brief conversation, like, I'm, I'm basically saying I can't believe you shot me, and, uh, he takes my phone, um, uh, which is on speaker, and he hangs up on the 911 operator. Can you, in this, um, audio recording, can you hear the defendant's voice in the background? Yes. All right. Um... During your 911 call with the um, 911 operator, is there somebody that's... can be heard yelling in the background? Yes. And who is that, uh, whose voice is that yelling in the background? It's Justin's. That chatter literally just didn't like that it was a Zoom cord instead of regular cord. And wanted to make his own fun. And Your Honor, at, at this time, I'd like to um, enter State's Exhibit B into evidence and publish. If you're going to have fun, I'm going to have fun. You know what I'm saying? The objection to B. No, nope, Your Honor. Thank you. <clears throat> the 29th, 2019, 9 31 and 36 seconds p.m. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What's your address? What's going on? Dying for what? I'm dying. Huh? A gunshot? Gunshot. Just stay on the phone with me, okay? Okay, how long did this happen? Stay on the phone with me, okay? Stay on the phone with me. I'm dying. Okay? I'm dying. Who is the who's the who's the person that's yelling? I'm dying. Huh? Yeah. Ma'am. Okay. Stay on the phone. Stay on the phone with me, okay? Okay. Stay on the phone with me, okay? I'm dying. How, how old are you? I'm getting How old are you? How old, ma'am? Ma'am. Hello? 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 H
Ms. Perkins, um, what were some of the things the defendant was yelling while you were on the 911 call? He said I wasn't safe and that he'll effing kill me. All right. Um, was he saying anything about opening the door? Yes. Jasmine claims that Justin was agitated and aggressive, yelling erratically and making multiple threats to kill her and her dog, and punching holes in the walls. She claims her dog never bit Justin. She then claims that Justin took the phone from her while she was on the line with the 911 operator and hung up. Her side of the story seems to better align with the forensic evidence of the case. But it doesn't really matter whose side of the story is closer to the truth because the fact still remains that Justin shot his girlfriend twice with an AK-47, closed door or not. He came very close to killing her, and in fact he did permanently maim her. It's disturbing to imagine just what he might have done had she been fatally shot at that moment. Based on the evidence of the case, it's highly unlikely he would have called 911. And if his primary concern was really the safety and well-being of his son, just consider what actually transpired as a result of his actions. Take note of where the son was found. So when I first got there, when I came up, there were uh, a few other officers knocking and banging on the front door of the, uh, the residence. All right. Um... Did anybody immediately answer the front door? No, sir. It took several minutes. Okay. Um, Is the cop Zoom calling from his car, dude? What the fuck? Um, did you go to the um, to anywhere else in that um, around the home besides the front? I did. Um, since they were knocking, we had uh, there were large curtains on the front of the um, the residence. God damn it, brother. I'm telling you, this is what happens when they defund the police. They don't even have a place to go to for privacy. He don't, he don't even have no sunglasses no more. You can't even see his power level. He's got no Oakleys on. This is what happens when the Liptards win. Mm -hmm. So after that, I decided, hey, you know, we might as well just in case of something. Someone's, you know, actually shot or dying inside, go around to the side, try and gain access either through the side or through the rear. Okay. Um, did you um, eventually enter the home? Yes, sir, I did. All right. And, and where did you enter the home from? Which door? It was through the, yeah, it was through the, uh, the west door. So um, it's, it, it's a, on the, side of the house that had like a little mini staircase leading to a platform um which which led to the inside through the side of the house all right upon entering the home what did you see so before i even really entered we we i shot my light inside and i actually saw um miss perkins laying on the ground inside which is which caused all the officers at least on the side to to run inside when i came inside we saw miss perkins um obviously shot she was bleeding out, saw a uh, AK-47 on the table somewhat next to her. I also saw a, a, a little child standing kind of near her and crying and upset. Now, I'm not saying that Justin doesn't care about his son at all. He clearly made the effort to have dual custody and be involved in the child's life, which counts for something. But the idea that he was protecting his son by firing an AK-47 recklessly just outside of his son's door at a woman and a 40-pound dog is insulting to the entire concept of logic and reason. The fact that his son was exposed to all this and was standing with Jasmine when police arrived as she was bleeding out just shows that even if you believe his intent was good, the outcome was decidedly not good for anyone. His actions on July 29, 2019 put his son's life and developmental well-being in jeopardy, not to mention what he did to Jasmine Perkins and her dog, all because he couldn't control his own temper, and now we're going to see him try to weasel his way out of facing the consequences. He's got to be a pit bull, right? Like a staffy. I haven't seen nothing yet, no. Officer Britt, yes. Did anybody take the dog out of the house? I have no idea at this juncture. I'm just, you come out of the house and all you, the dog's walking in the right. 
but but that that well that was the problem, officer. The dog bit me. But we can't do anything with the dog right now, so it's locked away so it doesn't get to anybody. But I was doing the best that I could. Okay, but the dog is not getting to anybody. I don't know how the fuck she survived getting shot with the AK-47 twice. Especially because like like the EF the EMTs were very fast. Because she got shot twice and one in a main artery on your leg. That's why I always tell you, like, you can't fucking shoot. You always, there's no such thing as like shooting someone on the leg to like uh, apprehend them. Because when you fucking, uh, when you shoot someone in the leg, like they still, they're still going to die. Like they have a fucking, um, they have a main artery there and her hand was maimed too on top of that. It's crazy. That's why they always say, only shoot at someone you intend to kill. Yes. Like, that's why cops mag dump when they shoot at someone. They don't just fucking, um, they don't just like shoot once. Um, just like I just mag dumped on that fucking chatter. Uh, it's top of the hour. I'm not going to run a, I'm not going to do like a segue or anything like that really hot right now so top of the hour it's time for a six second ad break um you already know the deal if you no longer want to see the ads all you need to do is subscribe either for five dollars or subscribe for free with a twitch prime it's 80 in la yeah it's because i'm eating really spicy curry And my AC is fucking maxed out. Here's the ad break now. Right now. We'll deal with the dog later. But I'm going to jail because the dog... You're not necessarily going to jail at this time. Handcuffs. You just run ads all day on stream? I don't know, man. You've been subscribed for five, <laughs> five months. And you've been following since April 30th, 2019. What do you want? You want to get banned? Are you bored? Here, go ahead. It's so weird. That's wrong for the detention and safety of everyone, okay? Five month subscriber following since 2019. There you go, dude. I gave you what you wanted. I hope you're happy. It's truly baffling that Justin still thinks at this point he somehow won't be getting arrested. While his girlfriend is bleeding out on his bedroom floor due to bullet wounds from his AK-47. Get your feet in, okay? Because okay. we're gonna talk. To, we're gonna. We're not gonna talk to you on scene. We're gonna have. We'll talk to you in a more safer environment with air conditioning and stuff, okay? Officer. Yep. Not here, my okay? Son, my son was in there. I was, I just, sure was in the. Can I get a number to call somebody for the son? Do you have any other any clothes? Do you have any any um in other countries, they train their police officers to shoot limbs. They have way less casualties because of it. What? I'm sorry, but you're wrong here. No, they don't. They have less casualties in other countries because cops aren't gung ho Rambo dipshits with the most, with the maxed out fucking, you know, Call of Duty level 55 prestige kit when they're dealing with like 14 year old black skaters. This notion that you're supposed to like aim for, uh, you know, body parts, like aim for legs and shit like that is an idiotic one considering the reality that like it doesn't matter the arteries don't change in fucking finland like you think finnish people don't have fucking arteries dude Bro, this guy keeps saying tourniquet, 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 tourniquet. Are you telling me that, like, cops are trained to fucking shoot people in their arteries just so they can put a tourniquet on them? Is that what you're saying right now? Is that the argument here? Explain this to me, please, chatter.
I want to hear from the juicer. Can patch a bullet wound on the stomach, but can't but can on the limb juicer thinks it's call of duty bro juicer thinks cops are running around like it's fucking you just bust out the tourniquet dude if you're apprehending a criminal that has a gun or whatever you shoot them in the leg uh in which you have like maximum fucking five minutes to apply a tourniquet and apply it properly what do you think this is fucking tarkov dude you think you got a med kit there Nah, no, dog, I just rubbed Vaseline on my eyes so I can see everything so clearly. And I'm just going to apply a tourniquet. I like that he went through with it though. He was like, dude, you can can't patch a bullet to the gut, but can patch a limb up, dude. They just want to get your side of things. We're not doing that here in the street. That's what they're saying. We're not doing that. Better than the mag dump in the chest. That's not a consideration. The point is you pull out your gun, you're supposed to fucking pull out with the intent to kill the other person. Okay? There is no fucking, you know, John Wick style uh gun kata. Okay, there is no equilibrium gunkata. There is no fucking like, you know, curve the bullet so that it hits the fucking pan behind him and then, you know, pings off the pan and then hits him right in the asshole. Like there is none of that. If you're a cop, you fucking take your gun out. That means you're ready to use it. Okay. And that also means you're going to shoot the kill. That's why cops are trained to mag dump and hit the body. Biggest target right at the fucking chest, you know, largest target. Hit it as many times as you can. Like, motherfuckers are making it seem like a tourniquet is, is great. Like, are they amputating the limbs, dude? Or you, you think cops are just, like, taking people's limbs off? That's why I was trying to get a number to call for your son. Notice he doesn't want to provide the officers with a contact to come get his son. This is because he still has hopes of not getting arrested. Therefore, he doesn't believe anyone is needed to take the child. Further, he intends to use the child as a sort of bargaining chip, and withholding the contact is the first sign of that. Mm. Uh, Mr. Haynes, what's a... Um... What's the telephone number I can call your mom or a cousin or somebody or an aunt? Anybody that we can to come take care of the child for? Well, this is just off the top of my head. Okay. I would have to get my phone. No, no, mom. Okay. Any anybody in town's number? Officer. We'll, we'll we'll work it backwards to the resources we have. Get your feet in for me, okay, please? Because you're going to the station, please. Because they want to talk to you about what happened today. They want to hear your side of the story. The investigators, not me. The dog. I can't do anything because I'm just the helper with this. I'm not the guy that's investigating this. Someone at the police station who is investigating this will want to hear your side of it that's where that's why they were going there okay but not here right now not in this moment Where's because boss? there's yeah, you tell me boss. i have no idea where he is i assume that they're calling somebody yeah. officer officer i will call i then get your feet I'll, in if you're going to cooperate I'll, i will thank you will, will you please tell me where my son is i assume that he's with a police officer at this time in can, safe custody can I, can I at least say goodbye to him i, I don't think that's necessary right him. now okay you're going to get to see him again and talk to him anywhere right but i don't think that that's healthy for the child right now okay so he, you've got blood all over you. That's scary. You got, you're in handcuffs. That's scary. That's not healthy for him. Okay. We'll let you talk to him in a little while. But right now, we're gonna take you to the station. Okay. The not you... right now. Not right now. You're not. I'm sorry. That's not healthy. Okay. Please. No. That's Please. not up for debate. I, 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 I would just say goodbye and leave. I don't think that's necessary at this time. Okay. We're... Manipulation often occurs in stages. He pleads with the officer to let him see his son, stating he'll just say goodbye and then leave. Of course, were this request to be granted. He would immediately have new requests and goals upon being reunited with his son. Getting himself out of the police car is merely step one towards kinda not getting up. arrested in this moment. Kind of fucked up that the cop's first priority isn't the son. What do you mean, dude? He's doing literally a good job. And you know me, I, I usually shit on cops nonstop. He's doing the best thing that he could do. He's trying to de-escalate. He literally fucking took the guy with an AK-47 away from his fucking child. That's what you're supposed to do. There isn't one cop. 
Like, actually, for, you know, this dude is like, he is making the kid a priority. You know, by fucking pulling his uh, psychotic dad away. I just ran an ad because I don't know if I ran an ad or not. I forgot. I think while I was, I got stunlocked during the fucking ad and I just ran it. Or it was literally exactly six minutes ago that I ran the ad. Let's take a look. Yep, that's right. I ran another ad. I'm sorry. You at least said you were going to? Yeah. Uh, well, we're waiting. We're waiting. You for gore. I did. I'm literally waiting. I'm waiting for the fucking ad to end. Most of you didn't even get the ad. There you go. And he's using his son to try to break down this initial barrier. It's not going to work. We're going to be leaving. That's why, that's why all these cars are clearing out. We're going to the station, okay? And, and I think that's reasonable to talk to the officer at the station who's investigating this. Not me. I'm not the one that's investigating this. I don't have anything to do with it. I don't have any juice in the matter. See all those guys standing over there? Those are all my bosses. They want you taken to the station. I do. Can you, can, okay. you, can, can you please consult with them? I just would like to say goodbye. To I'm going gonna, gonna to talk to them that you would like to talk to your son. I assume he may be taken to the station as well. Maybe that can be facilitated there. I don't know the circumstances, okay? Taken to the station. He's three years old. Well, I, what are we, we're, not gonna leave, we're not going to leave him here, right? I know. I know that. Right. Well, so, will, you please, will you please let me... At least say goodbye to him. I don't know the circumstances of that because I don't know. I don't know what I have an answer for. Yeah. She's gonna get rolled, though, Mr. Haynes. From here, it's just a bunch more circular logic from Justin as he attempts to manipulate the officers. So let's fast forward a couple hours to his interrogation at the police station. Brother, I wish some of the other motherfuckers I watched when you were offline were this considered with ads. Feels like I'm wasting my sub here sometimes. Motherfucker, you don't sub just to avoid the ass. Goddamn, dude. What the fuck? I'm certainly not going to run off on you, but is there any way to loosen or... Yeah, what we're going to do is the reason I asked you if you're left or right-handed is because we're going to let go of the one on your right wrist. We're going to hook your left wrist to the um, chair here, okay? All right, so... Are you injured at all? I was bit. Does Miskiv actually run nine ads an hour for every 20 minutes or whatever the fuck people are saying? Excuse me, too. I do it so I can call you out for being financially secure while speaking for those less wealthy than you. Yeah, it's illegal to do that. Um, they all do. It's kind of wild that they for a fucking entire year all shit on me and said I ran the most ads. And now they like fucking 10x my ads, dude. I love that. All the big streamers uh, have auto run. They auto run their ads. You're trusting chat to confirm that. By the dog, um, but I'm okay. Okay, is that blood on your leg yours? I, I don't think so. 
then your hand is not, that's not your blood? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Alrighty. Uh, that's your water? Yes, that's his. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, do you need anything? Do you want me to redo that cup so you can spin it around? Or? Um, yeah, that's fine. If, if you could. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm around. Are you comfortable or are you good? I'll be okay. Okay. You just holler if you need anything, okay? Alrighty. If you need anything, yeah, just shout out and we'll be right there, okay? How, how long will I be in here? I can't give you an answer. It's going to be until until it's done. Well, okay. Um, Officer Norwood said that my son would be coming up here. You know anything about son? Um. Okay, I can't tell if he like legitimately cares about his son or if he's just like trying to build a narrative. Uh, from what I understand, he is being brought up here. We'll keep an eye on him for now. Okay. All right, if that's all right. Uh, I mean, and do you know? I mean, is there any way to get in touch with his mom? There, there is, but I, but I don't know if I'm going home or not tonight. Okay. Do you do you have full custody of him? We're in the process. In the process. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Fair enough. We'll try to abide by that. Whatever agreements or whatever you're trying to do with it. Uh, it's it is my week with the baby. Um, okay. Yes, sir. Your week. Okay. So her week would be next week. Correct. You guys alternate every seven days. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Well, uh, your I guess your week just started then. Yes, sir. Um. Okay. We'll try to be as accommodating with that as we can, but we do need to talk about what happened, um, I, I, if that's I, all right with you. I understand. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of stuff to, to, to take care of before we can even do that. So, um, are, are you going to be the one that yes. speaks with me? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll be with you in just a minute, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Are you hurt at all? The dog did bite me. Um, okay. But I, I, I don't need any medical attention. Okay. Before. All right. Just, just want to be sure of that before we get started, okay? If yes, you do, we will get medical. Is this a wealthy neighborhood? Like, isn't this Jacksonville? It's not really wealthy. It's kind of surprising how uh, kind the cops have been. I know it's trash. I'm literally surprised at how like cordial the cops are. Poor people in states don't rock AKs. You'll see why soon. They're like they're literally fucking so Thank nice to him. You. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. All right. We'll be just outside. I appreciate so, it. He says. says. If there's anything you need, just shout. Okay. You'll be able to hear me with the. We'll computer. be able to hear you. So there's currently no public information documenting any known mental health factors in this case, and any speculation on my part is just that, speculation. Justin's personality and behavior, however, do align very well with an expression of narcissistic personality disorder. We will continue to see an inflated sense of entitlement, oh. especially when his mom arrives. Fuck! I just spilled Diet Coke, oh, a little bit baby amount of Diet Coke on my fucking desk. God damn it. I was just about to make an ableist joke too. Fuck. I got like punished. I got punished before I could do ableism. I live here. It's the largest city in the country. It has good spots and bad, but overall good. Nice one, fully capable streamer, what? No, I was gonna make a joke about fucking narcissistic personality disorder and how the cops have to let him go because he has NPD. It wasn't like, dude, when do I literally go fucking buck wild on ableism? It's always like, if I make fucking ableism jokes, it's literally like about, you know, conservatives. <laughs> Or like touch grass every now and then I'll say the R word when I get fucking heated but you know we've had I should have like a 
Like, you know how they used to have it, like those signs in factories, like zero days since accident. You know what I mean? You get one R word a month. Okay. Well, it's been like fucking three months, four months. You're right, Aslan. He should be in jail for his MPD only. Nothing else. I know you didn't say it, but in my heart, you did. <laughs> okay, guys, don't make me laugh. Because it, it fucking hurts my back a lot. When I laugh or when I take big breaths, it hurts my back. But we also see manipulative goal setting and impaired ability to recognize or identify with the feelings and needs of others, as well as antagonism and attention seeking. He greatly overestimates his ability to manipulate the detectives, he clearly asserted interpersonal dominance over Jasmine, and he's very self-centered and condescending toward the officers during his arrest. These are all classic expressions of grandiosity. But back to the interrogation, where Justin has managed to make it nearly a full 12 minutes without moving or talking. If you only knew at this point what the next 24 hours had in store for him. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm just saying you think I might be able to talk to somebody. I'm, I'm, I'm just concerned about my son. Talk to somebody like... Anybody, anybody about the situation that happened tonight. I mean, I was bit by a dog. I just would like to be able to express my side of the story. I don't know if I can even be able to link up with my... Bro, you pulled out an AK and shot your fucking girlfriend. What kind of psychopath, dude? They should just keep him in jail for good. Simply on the basis that, like, he has no consideration for another human being's life, dude. Like, he literally was like, I don't need to go to the hospital. I was shot by the... He's so, he's so bitch made, okay? He's such a bitch. He's such a pathetic little fucking bitch. My child. Well, like we said, your son should have been transported here. Again, I will find out for you. As soon as I know where he is, I will let you know. Um, you will be able to talk to anyone that you want to. One of us here. That's why we're here in this... Well, I mean... I, I I understand what you're saying, but well, I mean, obviously, I'm, you're not gonna be the one to talk to me. Uh, we're both gonna talk to you. Oh. Um, do you do you have any idea when that's? It's gonna it's really? gonna take some time, so just be patient with us. You said he's gonna be transferred up here. He should have already been. I heard them call. Where would uh, they put him? I'll find out where your son is. Okay. I'd like to just be able to state my side of the story. Okay, we'll see if we can expedite some of this stuff, okay? But again, you just gotta be patient, okay? Alright, give me a few minutes, alright? I'll find out about your son. Thank you. It's very telling that <laughs> just. <laughs> you fucking got me, dude. You fucking got me, dude, yeah. Justin doesn't know that talking to the police in this specific situation is only going to hurt him, especially when you consider that his mom is Florida Circuit Court Judge Barbara Hobbs. Now it's obvious where the sense yep, of- Yup, there it is. There it fucking is, dude. There it fucking is, dude. That's where the entitlement comes from. That's the reason why the fucking cops are being so cordial to him. Yup. Entitlement in regard to the law comes from. It's even more revealing that his mom actually comes to this interrogation to represent him. For real, she'll be here in like two minutes. And what? she goes ahead and advises. Oh my God. I knew the mom was in there and I thought it was weird originally. Now it makes sense, dude. Oh, this Jesus her son Christ. To tell the whole story to the police. With her knowledge of the law and position of authority, it's absolutely clear that she intended to work with the officers to get this case thrown out, or at least to have her son come home with her that night rather than be sent to jail. It's not entirely clear that she knew all the details of the case, but she certainly wanted to insert her influence into the outcome. Had she been properly representing his true and fair interests, she would have advised him to remain silent. But we'll get to all that soon. Hey, um, do you, 
Miss Hobbs is down in the lobby. That's not good. To represent you as your as your attorney. Uh huh. Is this something that you want to happen or not? Absolutely. You do? Okay. Bro, that's crazy. Like, that's literally... Yo, life is so different. When you have the, uh, you know, when you know the right people, when you are related to the right kinds of people. Can you imagine, like, mom, mommy hears about you. Mommy hears about you getting in trouble with the police force because you used your AK-47, which... Mommy may or may not have gotten a license for you for, you know, a special, a special license that's very expensive. I think it's like 15 grand, right, chat? And then mommy comes down to the po police precinct. I hope she brought chicken tendies. My friend's dad's a lawyer for the LAPD. You can't imagine the parties we threw at LMAO. Oh my God. Your friend's dad is a scumbag, dude. He's literally a lawyer for the LAPD. I'm sorry, RIP to your friend, but your friend's dad is literally like straight up the scummiest of bags. Oh. Oh, just ugh. imagine fucking defending the Los Angeles Police Department in a fucking court of law, dude. You have to just like throw at that point. Okay. You just, if you're a real one, you throw, you're like, I want to, I'm going to go to law school. AKs are like one K. No man. A license for a fully automatic AK 47. Like, you know, you can get a, you can get a license, but I guess it's a semi-automatic that he had. It wasn't a fully automatic. I don't know why I made that up. It is 15 K, right? See, I was right. Thank you. Thank you, dude. Let's go. Your son is here. Uh, he is doing fine. They found um, some way to show him Dora the Explorer. So he's, he's good. And I believe your mom is also with him. Okay. So. Um, is she coming back here? I'm not sure. Okay. Thank you yes, for doing that. No problem. Of course. Before we go on to dissect Justin's story and behavior, and lambast him and his mom for trying to use her position to evade charges, it's only fair that we acknowledge his humanity in this situation. It's unlikely that Justin fully understands his motivations for his own behavior, and we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that his inability to control his temper isn't a personality trait he asked for. It was his responsibility to- Okay, this dude is too much of a fucking lib, dude. I can't believe I'm saying this. With respect to- Oh my god, this channel is like way- This channel is more leftist than me, dude. This guy, he's like- Well, this guy has narcissistic personality disorder, it seems like. So we should probably treat him with baby gloves. You fix it before it caused harm or damage to someone else. And now he has to pay the consequences for that. But it doesn't mean that he's just a totally- No, you're just dumber. Whoa! Yeah, dude. You're right. Guess what, dude? Demo 91 has been permanently banned. ...bad person in every aspect. He clearly does have at least some real concern for his son. You're in your boxers. I don't want you to watch your mom in your bo in boxers. So they're a little big, but um, they should be better than wearing underwear. Oh, he was wearing boxers this whole time? Bro, I literally thought he had like a very fashionable... I, I thought he had very fashionable like short shorts. 
You know what I mean? Like thigh highs. That's what I thought was going on. Like I thought he had like. Yeah. I was going to talk about his drip, dude. I literally was about to be like, my man looks like he's about to go, you know, put on the Sperry topsiders and go boating. Before we go on to dissect Justin's story and behavior and lambast him and his mom for trying to use her position to evade charges, it's only fair that we acknowledge his humanity in this situation. It's unlikely that Justin fully understands his motivations for his own behavior, and we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that his inability to control his temper isn't a personality trait he asked for. It was- Oh, uh, so collect, co to collect whatever evidence is there of what happened, alright? Um, I'll just go ahead and ask you, the dog involved, whose dog is it? It's her dog. Her dog, okay. That's the one that bit you? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, one, one other question. Is is my attorney going to be able to come back here to see me? Yeah, yeah, I'm about to bring her up here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you, you, whenever you're ready. Yeah, well, whenever. It's, you, okay. it's your mom, so yeah, it, I know it's, it's a little different than, than the average scenario. I'm so. pretty sure. Um, okay. All right. And the, you know. Bro, imagine being this dude's girlfriend. And like sitting in the fucking Zoom meeting, one hand is the other one's gone now, okay? And you're handless and you're sitting in the Zoom meeting and they're going over the footage and this guy's just like chilling with your fucking dude that took your hand out. Like, because mommy was there to fucking defend him. But he's not white, is raised him to put him in jail? Unfair? What? Oh, my favorite kind of fucking, my favorite kind of chatter, dude. Guy who literally assumes this community is making takes that, uh, you know, correspond to his worldview of how liberals are. Instead of literally hearing me fucking uh, talk about the guy. You know, the conversation obviously is going to be privileged. We're not going to record it or anything like that. Talk right. to your mom, okay? I understand. All right. Chat. Did you catch the sigh of relief? Chat. Cops are being respectful and cordial. Not because they're fucking, you know, good cops all the time, but because his mom is a fucking district judge, okay? Come on. And she already found out about it and literally came to the precinct and is about to represent him. He didn't even ask for a lawyer. The mom came and was like, I'm representing my son or circuit uh, judge. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to bring her up here. <sighs> okay. He tries to play it off like he's nervous about seeing her, but it's more likely that he's incredibly relieved once he gets confirmation that she's on her way up. The psychological pressure of the isolated interrogation room will immediately evaporate the moment he makes contact with his mom, who he views- They do this all the time, it's so funny because like, motherfucker, I'm white as shit, and I have not gotten treatment like this from cops. The fuck do you mean, dude? Cops literally have never done that. Maybe in like some bumfuck part of Kentucky where you're from, where like, you know, your uncle and your cousin are both cops and they're the ones who fucking pulled you over. You know what I mean? Where there's like eight cops in the town and everyone's related to one another and also the cops. But like this shit's not happening anywhere else, especially not in a fucking big city. Good amount of cops will see you as not white. I know, but like, still as a higher authority than the detectives. Now, I want you to watch for two things in the next segment that are going to give clear insights into Justin's personality and behavior. Notice his demeanor when his mom enters the room and asks him about the dog, and notice how he acts when she leaves. Hey, Justin. What type of injuries you have? Is this the same dog you lied and said had love? It was supposed to be picked up tonight. Pardon me? The dog was supposed to be picked up tonight. I'm not here. Mm -hmm. Oh my okay. God. All right, all right. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate can, it. Can I, can I talk to her for a second? I'm going to. We're going to, yeah, you'll, you'll be able to talk here in a second. Can I talk to you? 
Yes, uh -huh. just, you just want to take a picture of the We bag. need to take pictures of your injuries first, okay? And then, and then you have the room to talk to your mom. First, we see the bowed head and lowered voice in submission to his mom. This is about as remorseful and ashamed as Justin gets during this entire interview. This really shows that he Imagine they can bumfuck KY cops, they're nice cops. If they have anything, they're way worse here. Man, they can do whatever they want here. No, dude, the fucking scenario that I laid out was not just like bumfuck Kentucky, 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 Kentucky cops. They were Kentucky cops that are related to you and everyone else in the bumfuck town of Kentucky. <laughs> Kentubby, dude. He views his mom as being above the officers interrogating him in terms of authority, since he submits to her, but not to them. And at the same time, it shows a complete lack of ability to measure the different levels of severity. I had a motorcycle cop that was banging my friend's mom represent me in traffic court in full uniform. I got off on all charges. Okay. This chatter 100% didn't want to say that the motorcycle cop was banging his mom. So he added my friend to the story. Okay. Like straight up, dude. Straight up, dude. What cop is literally fucking coming over to help you when you're some friends? Uh, you know, you're, you're, you're his like shit ass stepson's fucking friend. No, only if you're the shit ass stepson will the cop help you, dude. Which is fine. I mean, hey, whatever, dude. I didn't mean to call you out like that. Now I feel bad. Yo, chill. What if his homies watch the stream? Sometimes I go a little hard on you guys, you know, and then I feel bad. Wait, why are you tagging me when Germa lies? Where was the, which one was the chatter? Did they respond? Between lying to mom and shooting his girlfriend. <laughs> Next we... My favorite kind of chatter going. Don't. It's true. I was the motorcycle. <laughs> oh, he just, okay. He laughed it off. He laughed it off. Okay. We're good. We're good. He just said, Keck W. We see the momentary panic he suffers when his mom leaves the room, despite the fact that he was told just 11 minutes ago that he would have a privileged meeting with her as his lawyer before any questioning begins. He acts distraught when she walks out, as if he thinks that was the whole meeting. It's almost as if he thinks she's so angry about the fact that he lied about the dog that she's refusing to help him and just leaving him there to rot. Which again shows the lack of ability to measure severity. Just watch again and notice his fear of abandonment. Is this the same dog? Okay, stop ascribing values to this fucking chatter that you don't know. Maybe he appreciated that I, you know, ha I am in a jovial mood and like, you know, made fun of him, but in a fun way and acknowledged him, okay? You fucking chatters are like, oh no, he's just crying as a coping mechanism. He's laughing because he's, you know, coping. Lies are head love. Pardon me? The dog was supposed to be picked up tonight. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You want to tell me I was sir. nothing because Thank I said you, you were defending the dog too much? I'm still here. I'm sorry. Yeah, you'll, you'll be able to well, talk here in a second. Can I talk to you? Yes. Uh huh. Just, you just want to take a picture of the dog. We back. need to take pictures of your injuries first. Okay. And then, and then you have the room to talk to your mom. I said earlier that Justin displays grandiosity, but he also displays behavior typical of someone with the vulnerable narcissism construct, which usually lacks overt grandiosity. His fear of abandonment and hypersensitivity to criticism, like when he takes the conduct of the arresting officers personally, suggests that he has a combination of both grandiose and vulnerable narcissism, which is uncommon but not unheard of. 
There's some question in the literature as to whether narcissism is even a multivariable construct at all, but it does seem to express in either one or the other variant. Stop, dude. Who? You know whom they mentioned me. I would have been very upset if they should. Do you want to be present while we speak to him? Yes. Okay. All right. You, you're welcome to sit next to him. That meme makes me so sad. I'll, uh, I'll move your chair around. Okay. Then I get my little mini, and I'm no longer sad. So just so you're aware, the recording is now going. Um, and having these rights in mind, do you wish to talk to me about this now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, tell them the truth. So, this is kind of unique, you, you know, your, your mom is your, also your lawyer, all right? No matter how far into this you get, I'm sure she's explained this to you, you can stop, okay? I'm not going to push you to do anything you don't want to do, okay? And uh, we'll... We'll go through it as much as you want to or as little as you want to. Alright? Yes, sir. If for any reason... I kind of want her to fucking rip him, though. You know what I mean? I want her to fucking rip Aroni all of... Uh, rip Aroni the cops to shreds a little bit, you know? A little judge action. You don't agree because I, I family's, family's family, I understand. Um, this, Like I said, um, this is more emotional than just your typical... We can proceed, alright? Okay. Yes, alright, alright. So, how I understand it is, from what you've told officers so, so far, is that the dog was attacking you, you were, you were scared, and shot. I was in fear of my life. The dog had already bit me mm -hmm. at that time. Um, there was some type of disagreement. I don't even know what the circumstances for the disagreement was, but she had so-called barricaded herself within the room with the dog. Okay. And this is being, being Being the um, deterrent for me to come into the so room. So I busted out the Draco, the dude. Dog, was upset. And I started um, blasting she blindly. Time. I've dealt with her and that and the, and the dog, and she gets upset. The dog tends to mirror her emotions. I went in the room to try to speak with her about what was going on dog immediately got upset and disgruntled. I tr she tried to restrain the dog at that point, and I reached into the closet to try to go and get something out of the closet. Mm -hmm. What were you trying to get out of the closet? Just some clothes. Okay. I was just trying to put on some drawers and, some, and a shirt. I didn't have anything on at the time. Okay. Jasmine claims that at this point... He should have just said, I'm an American. Like... My immediate reaction to any sort of predicament is, is shoot my way out of it. This is just how it works, officer. I thought I could just blast my way into the fucking closet and, you know, blast my way into a t-shirt. You never done that? You've never shot the doors off of your closet, for example? Justin was- Cops like, okay, yeah, you're free to go, sir, actually. Mama judge, you don't need to actually adjudicate here. Uh, we're gonna let him go. Already irate, and when he went to the closet, he said, where's my gun? That doesn't mean that her side of the story is 100% accurate. We don't know whose side of the story is more accurate, but it's good to always keep that in mind when we're listening to the opposite side. So I went in there to try to retrieve some stuff. Motherfucker's like, I stood my ground against the door. In the process, she's trying to restrain the dog because she's arguing with me, and at the same time, the dog is upset. What was the argument over? because she didn't feel that it was appropriate that she was not able to come to the house. Okay. There this is not a house where she lives, correct? No, it's not her house. It's, okay. it's where I stay. Okay. They've already told her that she's not welcome at the house. There's a trespass order against her at the house. Okay. But you allowed her out louder there initially? I, I, I allowed her to okay. pick up the dog. Okay. There's a trespass order against her at the house. So. In the process, I allowed her to come in and retrieve her dog. She decided to stay. 
longer than it is that it would have taken to take the dog okay. from the house. Jasmine claims that there was no trespass warning ever given to her, and that she had been staying at Justin's house each night with her dog for several days leading up to the night of the crime. When police arrived, she was entirely naked from the waist up, with only a pair of underwear on her lower half. Justin claims they didn't have sex on the night in question, but states that they did the night before. So his story, that he was basically trying to kick her out, makes little sense, especially when you consider the following message, sent from Justin to Jasmine just nine days prior. July 20th, 2019. If I could ask for one thing for my birthday, I'd ask that you please call me. All I'm asking is that you hear me out for the last time. Please. Now, relationships are messy. And this doesn't... Sound so bad, dude. ...prove anything. But it certainly suggests that Jasmine maybe wasn't the crazy one of the two. And also makes Justin's ensuing character assassination of her seem pretty flat. In the process, she lingered around, stayed in the living room or whatever, ended up coming into some type of confrontation with me. I don't even know what it was about, but I'm assuming it was the fact that she could not be at the house because of what my grandfather and my mother told her about. Bro, I love that as the attorney, mom is doing such a poor job. Obviously her presence alone is like enough to deescalate the situation. Like she, you know, like, she probably assumes that, like, half she's going to be able to get him off. And then the other half is, like, she's curious to fucking find out what happened. But, like, from an attorney point of view, this is dog shit, dude. He's literally just giving all of the events. He's just telling the cops everything. I thought attorneys were supposed to make this process harder. About coming to the house. And this has to do with cutting my tires and doing all kinds of other okay. um, things at the house. So I was explaining to her that this is not going to be appropriate. You have to take this dog here. I can't from here. I can't watch the dog anymore. Anyway, she got an attitude about that. She goes into the. When did you have that conversation? I'm sorry. This is just prior to. So in person. Yes, sir. Did you <laughs> What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Ow. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what the dog doing? Dude, he's a... <laughs> we now, we're, we're now gonna hear from the dog. <laughs> That's my lawyer, dog. I'm going to jail. <laughs> Do you pay yourself workers' comp and ice cream sandwich for your injury? Yeah. Yeah, look at my lawyer, dog. I'm going to jail. <laughs> Oh, I can't. I just, every time I laugh, it hurts. Did you communicate this at all by phone <laughs> uh, earlier? Like, absolutely, call? absolutely. Okay. I, t I told her, and I'm not sure if it was via text or a phone call, where it is that I told her yeah. that it was inappropriate. The reason I'm asking is if there's any kind of proof to what you're saying. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to know it. So if there's cell phone communication between you two. I can't and... remember if there were text messages or not. I would, okay. I would have to reference my phone, but I know it is that I told well, her that it would Even call logs. You know, yeah. I, I believe there is a text message that, that indicates okay. that I was not uh, cool with the dog and that we needed to be. If, if, she, if the dog was going to stay any longer than it is that she intended, that we needed to be careful okay. about it because... They didn't want the dog there, and I didn't personally want the dog there. I mean, he's all over the place. He's like, yeah, we, uh, there's a trespassing order on her. But also at the same time, like, you know, I was fine with her bringing the dog over there. There's a lot of anti-pit racism happening here, too. I'm not even going to get on. You guys don't want to talk about that. You know what I mean? Because he's a liability. Okay. At that, at that point 
you must not have plans tonight. No, I actually do. I have to. I have to end stream soon. Unfortunately. Why is it that you? Let me just ask this. I, I yesterday I went by the house on my way to church. Mm -hmm. and I saw the dog. And yes, chat. My entire fucking family's here. I, I have to hang out with them. I went through the room. So I know. Okay. You have to get rid of that dog. Right. Okay. She made it very clear that the dog needed to go. Okay. At that point, I indicated that to her earlier in the day, or at least said anywhere from, from lunchtime to closing time, 5 o'clock. Okay. Uh, that the dog was not welcome at the house and that she would have to make other arrangements as far as keeping the dog. She said something about being Airbnb and that's what her house was doing and that she couldn't keep the dog at the house because of due to obviously her rental situation with Airbnb. Once it is that we got into an argument about the dog, she decided to barricade herself in, in that's my words, barricade herself within the room to where it is that I couldn't access my own bedroom without having to go through her or the dog. Justin's lost all pretense of being genuinely conversational and has become highly performative. A common behavior we see with narcissistic personality disorder is the deliberate or forced use of big words where they don't belong, sophisticated language that's uncharacteristic or inappropriate for the setting, or technical jargon which isn't always well understood by the narcissist or used properly. We see all of that with Justin. Perhaps most prominent is his use of verbose past tense phrases while telling his side of the story, like saying, when it is that I had told her, rather than simply, I told her. You'll notice that he does this constantly, and it's a clear tell that he is building a narrative. It's actually instinctive behavior for human beings attempting deception to increase their verbiage to give their mind more time to construct a narrative without accidentally revealing what actually occurred. The mark of a good liar is one who can do so without the extra words and irrelevant tangents. This suggests that Justin has met very little resistance to his compulsive lying throughout his life, since he might have gotten good at it if he had. But it's clear that delivering a coherent and plausible narrative, true or not, that the police can at least pretend to accept, is objective A in Justin and his mom's mission to defuse this situation and avoid consequences. Hence Justin's performance. Again, had they truly intended to let this matter go to court, they would have exercised Justin's Fifth Amendment rights. Okay. I go into the bedroom to try to go ahead and talk to her about what it is that's going on and removing the dog from the house. Dog is disgruntled. She is restraining the dog in, um, in this kind of manner, right? Okay, so she's got it like around the body, the neck? Around, around the neck. Okay. Trying to keep the dog from okay. advancing. Anyway, I go into the room, try to retrieve whatever it is that I retrieve from the closet. The dog bites me on the leg. Okay. From that point, I retreat out of the room. I leave, I leave the room, shut the door behind me, and I immediately go and grab, um, well, I guess it would be the AK that's in my house. Okay, describe describe that gun so we know which one it is. It is a uh, Kalashnikov an AK-47. Um, is it like a, a short barrel type gun, a long barrel, 16 inch barrel type gun? It's Does it have a stock it's a on rifle. it? It's, a, it's got a stock. It's a rifle, okay. Yes, All right. Um, is it, what color is it? It's a wood stock and it's a pretty much well black gun. Okay. Um, and the handgun it is that I usually keep in the house happened to be in the closet, so I, I didn't have any access to that. So I retreated okay. to whatever it is that I I had to defend myself against the dog. And where did you say you kept the AK? It's in another bedroom, close to the bathroom on the other side of the house. Um, okay. In the spare bedroom. So you retreated from the bedroom because you couldn't go any further to get your pistol. Correct. So you retreated from the bedroom, went and got your AK-47. From, from another bedroom. From so another bedroom and came back to this bedroom. Yes, sir. It's okay. a four-bedroom house. Okay. Um, in the process, um, when I did is that I tried to go back in there and ask her to take the dog up out of here um, because the bedroom that I share is adjacent to the bedroom that my son shares. It's right okay. across. There's a bathroom here, my bedroom, and, and his bedroom. So when it is that I opened the door, the dog was sitting right behind the door again. Um, 
right behind my bedroom door. Okay. So when it is that I open up the door, the dog is right there. Shut the door. I ask her, Jasmine, to take the dog up out of the house. I'm telling you, I'm serious. The dog has already bit me. Shoot. At, through the door. In okay. Two things. Okay. This is where we got to pause at 4234. Okay. And I apologize for that. Two, I ordered, guys, I ordered a bowling shirt off Amazon. And I want to share it with you guys. Okay? It's a Guy Fieri shirt. Take a look. That's right. It's fucking Flavor Town. And I'm the mayor, baby. Now, I had another one of these shirts already. Some of you know. A very similar one already to this one. But this one, it's got flames on the collar. Yep. <sighs> anyway, um, it's too big. Yeah, I know. It's whatever. You look like a 90s smelly kid. Yo, my half brother has that shirt. He does meth and is in jail. Okay, hopefully I have a better uh, future than that then. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. <laughs>